Hi guys, and welcome to this episode of the Comedy Defect Podcast. My name's Winter Fonander, I'm a comedian, and this is my show. This is episode 52 with a very funny and very tall and incredibly passionate Ryan Dalton. He has got an Instagram, he's got a YouTube, he's got a Twitter. All oh, Ryan Dalton, go check those out. He also runs his own gig in Bracknell called The Comedy Wire, and he's a very funny guy. He uses his comedy for good. Uh, and that makes him sound like a superhero. He doesn't walk around in tights or have an emblem on his chest. But he does wear a cape. No, he doesn't wear a cape. But he's a very funny guy. And I respect what he does with his comedy because he's trying to make the world a better place. That sounds really cheesy. But in, 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 that's not his words. They're my words. But he does. I mean, it's, it's very responsible what he does. He also has a podcast called Into the Wild that is on Podbean. And so go and check that out and go and follow that there. You can follow this podcast on Twitter. We're there at The Comedy Defect. You can follow me at Winter Phonander. And you can see my live updates for my show, A Side Effect, which is going to the Edinburgh Fringe from the 3rd until the 27th of August, not the 7th or 14th. And that is in the Three Sisters, in the Marquee, from 2 to 3, all the run of the Fringe from the 3rd until the 27th, not the 7th or 14th. But if you want to support this podcast... And you like me, come see me live. I've been working on the show. I'm excited about it. Everyone says that. I have run through it an awful lot and I'm still finding more jokes. It's great. As I say, the more you run through something, the more connections there are. And it just, you can connect everything to everything. And in the end, I say, it just ends up making sense to you and not anyone else. But I've managed to maintain the structure. Got to maintain. But you can follow me at Winterphone under there for the live updates from an Edinburgh Fringe show. So come see that. And I say, the Free Sisters, two to three. 3rd to 27th, not the 7th and 14th, guys. But you can also follow me on Twitter at Guinness Jokes, which I'll be taking, I'll be stripping all of the jokes out of that Guinness encyclopedia and putting them up on Twitter for you to enjoy and share. Now, if you also want to donate, you can. You can go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect. You can donate as much or as little as you want. You can donate as little as a dollar or as much as you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that can't donate, come see my Edinburgh Fringe show. I'm there from 2 to 3 in the marquee on the, from the 3rd until the 27th of August. Uh, so that's it, guys. I don't want to talk for too much more about this episode because it's a really good one. You're going to really enjoy it. Very funny guy. And this is episode 52. This is a great episode. Enjoy this episode with very funny Mr. Ryan Dalton. Ryan Dalton, welcome to the Calm Defect. Thank you very How much. How are you? Me. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. It's been a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a crazy week, but I'm yeah. okay. I'm okay, man. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I've just been, uh, you know, getting stuff together for the fringe and stuff, and trying to, yeah, you know, going to build the full it. Run. Yeah, I'm going to do the full run this year. I'm doing my yeah. first 45. I know it so well now that it's gone from 45 to 40. So, uh, <laughs> so five minutes. That's what you want. That's what you want. Less is more, right? Less mm. is more. And like you know, hopefully the that of 40 is just you know punchy jokes, which is good, man. I'm really enjoying it. But but you got up this year yourself? I'm not. No, I. I, I contemplated it for a while. I still might. The, the years that I decide not to go up, I still think I probably will and end up do going up for a couple of days. So I think this year will be one of them. But I'm doing the Camden Fringe with Jake oh, yeah. Howie. We're mm-hmm. doing a show at uh, the Camden Comedy Club. Should I plug it now? Should yeah, go for it, man. <laughs> what date? What time? It's the 11th to the 15th of um, August at Camden Comedy Club, 8pm. It's called Ha Ha Land. Cool. We're completely just ripping off the poster for La La Land. But yeah, we're doing that. So we decided to focus on a smaller fringe this year. We, we probably will go up. But nothing confirmed. Just sort of like just, just to have fun with it in Camden for a couple Yeah, of days. just trying to both write a new half an hour. Yeah. Doing a bit more of different material that we haven't done before. Right. So branch out into different areas with just, our writing. Yeah. You've had a bit of trouble the last few days, haven't you? <laughs> what happened there? I got mugged. Oh. And... I'm kind of impressed because I'm I'm happy that I've made it to the age of 27 <laughs> at the height of six or seven with floppy mm. ginger hair and it's now it's only just happened. I yeah. think that's quite a success yeah. to go that period of time without getting attacked. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> um, pretty good. But yeah, I got I, I got mugged. Two guys came up on a moped. I was in Stroud Green area in London and they came up, nearly hit this little girl. It was horrible. Oh. And then they pushed me. I dropped my phone. They took the phone off the floor. They carried on, but just before they got out of the way, they just shouted, don't follow us, as if I'm about to just chase a moped away. Um, mm-hmm. Apparently I have that look. Yeah. And 
I did kick out. I tried to kick them off the moped. A bit yeah. of a uh, bit of like kapow kind yeah. of. But you're not getting away. A bit of rage yeah. came up there. Yeah, but, yeah, up. Well, the rage came up, but the yeah. kick was very much eh. Like <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst kick I've ever tried. But I was panicking. They just they are. Oh, they yeah. They just went away. Man. Tried the karate so kid like Kareem. I've got I this. was yeah. Got this, guys. Arms up, just <laughs> pow. Like knock them off. It was so annoying. It was more just the inconvenience of God. What am I going to do? And so many people came up to me afterwards, just like. I bet it's nice not having a phone for a bit in it. I bet it's so nice. And I'm looking at them going, it's like, no, it's not fucking good. It is hell on earth. It's exactly how you think it would be. You have to plan when you're going to meet people. Yeah. You go, If I'm late, you've just got to wait by that tree, buddy, because I cannot text you. It's That's so it. boring. Well. Exactly. And, and like plans change so quickly as well. Yeah, now. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, we're not meeting at this place, we're meeting at this place. And exactly. Ryan's waiting at a pub yeah. for half an hour going, well, things must have changed. And then it's your <laughs> fault then, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just how, and do you know the worst part? Oh, I'm going to sound so, like such a millennial when I say this now, but I couldn't, get on Twitter oh. right because I and I love Twitter I love that it's how I find out about all my news and stuff like that. it's so sad wow but I know it's bad no it? no I, I just I'm just it's the opposite of me I hate it I do hate you hate it, it. I love I, Twitter I, I, like I've got three accounts and like I just kind of I, I like it for doing little bit little jokes but I can't it's just too much going on for me and it's just like really? oh, no, I'm like I, I'm going to get lost in this and I get obsessed so I if I get hooked into Twitter yeah. it's all over for me that day's over <laughs> that's fun. it so just go okay that's fine that is true you do yeah. need to know when to stop mm. Twitter do you and have I think, like a time think, limit do you put yourself a time limit or something or? no I just I kind of just I go on if I feel like I can be involved with something I do it's mainly joking stuff but okay. I try not to have debates right I do spark up a few animal conversations sometimes, which I kind of enjoy because there's yeah. a lot of people out there that go like, oh, like you know, animals. animal cruelty, <laughs> animal cruelty, yeah, whilst they're talking into a burger. But it's cool. like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I do like to join in with that stuff. But I just love that people are so quick on it. Mm. That humour is so quick. Yeah. Like just now, as I met you at the station, the thirteenth Doctor has been mm. announced, and it's mm. a female Doctor. It's great, and already there's just. Pow, pow, not jokes, not bad jokes, but just kind of like funny memes going up mm, already. Yeah. And it's just like people are so quick, they're just yeah. waiting for it. And I, yeah, so it. I love it as a format for that. Cool. But I couldn't get on. Mm. I tried to log on, forgot my password. And then Twitter was like, don't worry, Ryan, we've sent a verification code to your phone for you. I was like, brilliant, you absolute <laughs> arsehole. Yeah. And you can't contact Twitter. Yeah. You can't do it. No. There's no phone number. There's That's no email it. address. That's the problem. That's why I think I have uh, people these days have got so much rage. Yeah. Because they're so like, oh, I'm you just going to take it out on people. <laughs> you've got a touch screen <laughs> phone. You've got to go, just going to, oh, rah! Touch, 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 touch. And, and you've got to do it lightly because yeah. you'll crack the screen. That's it. And you, and you can't punch it in like a keyboard. If you had a keyboard, fine. <laughs> you could get like a, a couple of boxing gloves with a, you know, kind of maybe a, maybe a couple of pencils on the yeah. end. Like, ah, <laughs> you, you would probably smash your keyboard off. This why people are less stressed when they use typewriters. They could yeah. really get this out their angle. I'm going to write this poem. <laughs> exactly. That was it. Get it out, you know, punch it out. A bit like, it's just, Every so often, ding. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, just like that was it. You just released another bit of rage, yeah. and you know that was that was done. And that's a belt. That's a that's a round. Bing. Yeah, yeah. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah round two. It. Ding, ding. That's it. <laughs> this is why I get so infuriated when people look at, like you've had an email or mm. a text saying your package has been delivered and it's not there. Yeah. And then when you contact them, they're like, "Well, we've sent you your confirmation." Yeah. And I have that. I had that in previous jobs where people, I had a contractor walk in to a reception that I was manning once and just say to me, "It was like." <laughs> I'm here to um, just check the water pipes and water tank in your basement. I was like, we don't have a basement. And he was like, it says here you do. And I was like, well, it says over here you don't, we don't have one. So we don't have a basement. Yeah. And he said, look, mate, he said, these guys in the office don't get this kind of stuff wrong. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm very sorry to tell you, buddy, on this occasion, they yeah. fucking got it wrong because yeah. there's no basement. That's he it. made me walk around the perimeter of the... This was for a self storage company. Yeah, no, Maybe yeah. walk around to show him there was no basement. Wow. Did not it, believe me. Like you think that thing out of like the, the old war films, you know, kind of with the yeah. with his cane going tap 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 <laughs> tap tap tap. See? See there's yeah, your that, basement. There's a hollow under there. That's right, exactly. <laughs> Pull back that carpet. There it's it is. Funny. If there is a basement, there are bodies in there as well because oh I've never seen you, one. Yeah, you do not want to find this basement. Yeah. Honestly. You will end up in there for the rest of your limited life. That's so what did you worked as a receptionist for a bit then? Oh god, that was yeah, that was an awful job. That was a job I left this year. It was uh, for working for Big Yellow Self Storage. Okay. I say reception yeah, it was kind of reception it's essentially a hotel for people's shit. Like, there's some people you yeah. need storage sometimes because you're moving house, you haven't got a house for two weeks. Sure. That is absolutely acceptable. Mm-hmm. You know, but people walk in and be like, I need storage today. 
Yeah. It's like, well, why? Like, I've just moved out my house. Like, well, you woke up this morning, went, just clear a lot of it, we'll go find a house. So, yeah, I was having to sit there and sell cupboards, essentially. Wow. Transitioning from their yeah. old house to their new house, right? We're just like, oh, I've had enough of this person, I'm getting the fuck out of here. This also, oh, some people just come in and go, we've just got too much stuff. I'm like, you fucking idiots. How have you got to that point where you're like, what are you, Wombles? How have you, mm. you just keep collecting shit? And they, they're like, oh, no. They go with, uh, these storage companies go with, like, the big yellow storage company, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's the, they got one in Hemel called the Big Blue Box. Got the blue, yellow, mm-hmm. there must be a green one, the big green Lockers, and 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 the thing is they're all the fucking same and they try mm. to like the, a big yellow did this and I don't even mind saying this about them but they, they really tried to glorify and this is what they said their product it's like right. there is no product mm. I mean, you open a door to an, it's like a room the room we're in now it's like this yeah. you open it up but it's empty it's like is this okay, guys? It's yeah. like, of course it is. My sofa can fit in it. It was, yeah, great. So, it was so boring. And it's like, you try and upsell as well. Oh, no, it's, uh, you know, I mean, you might want this oh, one. Good. The deluxe. What, yeah, what kind of other services? <laughs> Do you want extended hours out? Oh, my God. Every time yeah. I said sentences like that, I'm pretty sure a bit my soul just crushed away. Like, Did you have to do, like, walks around to the, the perimeter to see if there was anyone, like, actually living in these lockers? Oh, uh, yeah, was absolutely. It, so you had to do a morning and evening check. Right. And not of the actual rooms. And there was CCTV and stuff, oh, but... Yeah. You do. You did get people occasionally. Like you'd start to clock it. You'd start to see them leaving, just a bit too early in the morning okay. and arriving a bit too late at night yeah, right, to right. access your stuff. Okay. So if it happened like several days, there was this one guy that it happened about four nights on a trot. I noticed it, and I just said to him, I was like, so I checked. Oh, that was it. I checked the um, online database where you can see codes tapped in and out, and mm. I. You came in last night again. He went, yeah, yeah, just going for a few bits. I went, but you didn't leave until mm. this morning because I mm. saw it on the system mm-hmm. and he went yeah I went look I know what you're doing you know what you're doing don't yeah. do it and we won't talk about it again and it just stopped happening oh that's good because it's embarrassing like this. Totally. it's bad for them they're all yeah, sick rock bottom <laughs> totally I know it's tough mate but yeah. you know this is not a B&B isn't it you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, mate, it's the, not the big like, yellow B&B you know I guess, it, I guess it's better than the street true, but true. it's just like I yeah. was like mate you can't do it mm. like one have night some self-respect yeah too. have some self-respect <laughs> try and go and get, go to the YMCA if you need to and yeah. get your help get some help but that's it yeah we never I never instantly kicked them out because I was like dude yeah. I know what you're doing yeah. just don't do it that's it but yeah that was a that was a shit job I had that for a year yeah. that was yeah. uh, very much because for the money <laughs> you're a freelancer aren't you? yeah so I went freelance so I packed that job in at the beginning of the year and I decided to go full time in comedy and I knew I had to have something else alongside me mm-hmm. um, just because you you know, to, for a bit of support. Yeah. So I started my own dog daycare company. It's great. That's amazing. The, I'm living the dream. Totally. I'm living the dream. Looking yeah. after dogs and making people laugh. Yeah. Or trying. Okay, what's your favourite dog you've looked after? It's a great compare question. What's your favourite dog? <laughs> that is yeah, a great you know, compare. You know, like you know what? Your, your most uh, you know, interesting story about the dog that you've looked after. Oh, this uh, is a good story. Let me... Yeah. Okay, so we've got... No, this is. <laughs> it's a great dog. We've got, That's a compare <laughs> question. Yeah. Nailing it. Nailing it. I'm so um, good at comparing. Like, so, <laughs> so we've got... Um, so we've got a regular daycare dog <laughs> that I, I look after. We. That's, I've probably gone on this company. I guess my girlfriend helps me out. With cool. This, yeah. Um, he's called Murphy. He's a golden retriever. Right. He's like textbook dog. Mm. Like if you were to Google, oh, dog, it would come yeah. up golden retriever. But he was on TV. He was on a program called Super Vet. Right. Um, which is if there's dog, people that have a dog. Do you uh, know I'm Super sorry. I, I didn't realise I was sitting in the presence of someone who's a dog here to the, the, you know, the, stars. Rich, the stars, the the, the doggy stars. Yeah. Of the, of the also, people. another dog we look after it was trending on Twitter because he had his picture taken outside a polling station, and BBC used it as all the dogs. Oh wow! Yeah, well, sorry. So I we're clearly know. like the Hollywood. We need to start again. <laughs> well, I need to start again. I'm, I'm t- dynamic slowly changed. <laughs> That's weird, isn't it? It's so weird. That's great. Do you, do you watch Super Vet? You're uh, a dog. No, I, I, I don't don't watch it now. Okay, okay. So, well, every, all other dog owners do. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> sorry. No, but it's really. Research. There's this vet uh, called Noel Fitz. Fitzpatrick and he's yeah. basically really technical in the stuff that he does to help sick and injured sure. animals so he makes like bionic arms for oh, wow. like printing or legs for animals and stuff like that and Murphy the dog that we look after as a puppy he's two now or approaching two as a yeah. puppy it's about four months he had his bottom jaw ripped off by another dog and it was just crushed oh, and man. he got taken into this vet they chose it and there was a point where they were, the episode is horrific. Like yeah. I cried when I watched it. Like I only I only watched it because we had Murphy. So I was like, oh, yeah. let's see what it was like. And I was like, oh my god, this is horrific. But the work that this vet did to get this jaw, look into what it is now, because you'd never know looking at him. It's incredible. Wow. So yeah, that, that's the dog we look after now. When people 
see him when I take him out for a walk and he meets other dogs they're yeah. like oh my god he's such a great dog yeah, like, yeah he was actually on Superbet they realise and go oh, oh yeah. my god it's that dog mm. so yeah he's a bit, wow. bit of a fan he's a diva I'll bet I bet you've thrown a ball for it very gently just kind of gingerly throwing the I ball for yeah, it because when I, when yeah. I, I knew he had the injury but then when I saw it I was like oh my god I don't want to play tug of war with you anymore yeah, totally. because your jaw falls <laughs> off <laughs> yes, I I'm insured but I don't think it's going to go yeah, I don't think it's going to go out <laughs> you won and kind done of hundreds of thousands of pounds like, <laughs> oh yeah. my god so that's he's, he is my favourite because we have him Monday to Friday he's essentially I'm not going to say he's our dog because he's not at all but we have him so frequently that it feels like I have a dog during that's the week nice. so yeah that's that's cool and regular um, regular customer then really right yeah regular that's customer yeah, so got, a, got, a, got a, yeah, a picture on the wall with his paw print on it it's like yeah, yeah, that's a good it. idea it's great that's that'd be great <laughs> I'm gonna do that now so you know, this is the uh, vet you know was the uh, super vet here and then like you could do that all around like take pictures that'd be great and people are like oh my god and then you don't even have to sell yourself you're like, oh, that's such that's a great it. I'm gonna start getting framed pictures of dogs we have yeah man oh, do god. it do you mind if I take a picture of your... Well, it's their child, isn't it, really? So, you know, get the old sign for them and... Yeah, yeah, get you them. Know, but, yeah. But, yeah, so I run that, and that's good fun, because it literally... I'm a very outdoorsy person. I like to be going to parks, walking around woods and stuff like that. So if you have a couple of dogs, it's yeah. just, it makes it more fun. That's you can be on your own and still be talking. <laughs> and you went full-time comedy at the start of this year. Yeah, so it's... I mean, it's, 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 it's a challenge, isn't it? It's, yeah. You kind of... When you're not with an agency or anything, it is kind of like, oh, God, I've got to do this all on my own. So that is kind of step one for this year. That's what I need to focus on, just trying to get on an agency kind right. of thing. But and what does your missus do? She is a freelance musician and writer. So she runs a band called Quiz Cats. They're fantastic. They're a jazz band. They do up to twelve piece. And then she's a writer as well. So she's got a blog, and she's actually writing a book this year. So yeah, she's currently writing that. So that's a bit of a bit of competition at home, isn't it? Really, yeah, you? both free last both one. Yeah, what are you doing? You write a book, and you're you're a writer, and you're a musician as well, and you're you're just like I'm just going to stroke this. What are you doing? I'm, I'm just writing a stick. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just write this guy. Yeah, yeah. Got a new guy. I'm doing really well. Right <laughs> <laughs> you got a podcast as well, you know? Yeah, which has had to go on the back burner because my laptop. Oh god, oh, I sound like such a jinx. Oh. My laptop crashed. So. I got episode one out. I was just about to upload episode two and it crashed. So that was really annoying. But it's, they're all there. I've got about four pre-recorded that are just waiting to be edited and done. Um, but it's called Into the Wild. It's on Podbean. Podbean? Right. Yeah, it's, it's, they're good fun. So basically I have an animal expert on. So it'll be someone that works um, for some sort of zoo or organisation, mm. um, conservation charity. And then I have a comic come on. And we just kind of, right. we pick three out. Well, I pick three animals. <laughs> so the first one is called Tigers, Tarantulas. And then... We spoke about Tilikum, which was an orca at SeaWorld that died at the beginning of this year. Okay. But it was the, the orca that was behind the story Blackfish. The, 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 Have you seen the, the killer orca, yeah? Yeah, the one yeah. that moved from like three places in yeah, North three, America. And it killed so. three trainers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's it. We spoke, the reason why we spoke about him is because he, well, A, he died when, just before we did the podcast. Yeah. And also he's such, his story was so interesting mm. and he was the reason they made Blackfish and he was the mm. reason that now SeaWorld are having to... Oh, his story is the reason why SeaWorld are now not breeding orcas anymore. Oh, great. So it has done a lot of good. Yeah. You know, no one wants to be, like, starved and, like, put into that kind of, you know, in prison for the rest of their lives to do it's, tricks like that. That's no fun. It's, no, it's not. And it's... I've worked for zoos, and animals and wildlife is my passion, and it would always be in my life. And yeah. a lot of people... And I do get asked quite a lot, going, like, so how can you, you know love animals and do everything you can mm. for animals and wildlife but still support zoos it's kind of, well it's a very broad topic you can't just say zoos are bad it's like saying yeah. I had a bad burger now I don't like restaurants mm-hmm. like there are certain animals I don't think can be kept in captivity I mm. do believe orcas are one of those for yeah. me I don't think they should be but at the same time by them being in captivity they are raising a hell of a lot of money to help mm actual wild marine mammals right so it is that kind of few for the many yeah let's say well you know obviously that one that wasn't the right few yeah he was just not the right yeah (laughs) it's like no way man what are you talking about a male predatory animal I mean the the same thing would happen if it was you were doing the same with lions you know what I mean like one day there will be one lion Mm. that is just a bit more kind of eager than the others it happens you're working with a predatory animal Mm. it might predate yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's something to be expected. That lion might have just eaten, but then might have thought, yes, it's like you. Why not? You have meat every, a certain meat every day. You go tonight, I'll have fish. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just trying something else. But you're, uh, you're obviously a vegan then as well, are you? Yes, I am. Yeah, right, yeah. and so did you try to be a vet as well? Uh, I did. My course that I did was really... So I did a national diploma in animal, animal management and zoology. So mm-hmm. it was very much the practical side of caring for animals. Mm-hmm. A lot to do with biology and a lot to do with conservation as, and kind of business management as well. It taught yeah. such a range that we learned. But as soon as I did that and finished, I did a bit of travelling, came back, and I got a job straight away at a zoo. Mm. So I didn't have to take any further education, which I was really thankful for. So I had about a five-year career with that, Great. just because I fell into it. And then I went into the educational side, working into the zoo, so managing a team that kind of did all the public presentation stuff. So it was, for me, that was a chance where I was really having to research and really having to like make sure my facts were correct, because these were what we were pushing to the public. So yeah. that was a really, really fun job. Mm. I learned so much doing that. So the talks were sort of like just educating the public about what we can do to make the lives of these animals better. Sort of yeah, thing. and the reason why they're in captivity, because a lot, you know, people talk about breeding programs and they just mention it. They go, yeah, these tigers are part of a breeding program. Mm. Boom, never mentioned again. It's like, well, mm. these people should know exactly what this breeding program is. Mm. What does it do? Because it's not an excuse. You can't just go, oh, they're here for a breeding program. <laughs> Guys, it's fine. <laughs> you don't need to know any more than that. Like, no, like, yeah. tell them, like, I yeah. think just England, like Love Island off you go yeah just for there <laughs> <laughs> we're going to film is, this we're going to totally document everything it's going to be amazing <laughs> off you go boy it's so interesting <laughs> like I think with England England are very bad at this I've noticed uh, mm. it's a lot better in other places in Europe especially like Scandinavian zoos where they're a lot more honest and open about mm. their animals in the zoo and I think that's really important because it, it is a business and it does have goals it does have targets that they're trying to strive mm-hmm. and work towards both financially and both for the animals and I think it's honest to share the animal ones because, yeah. you, know, you know, zoos do have a reputation because of the bad ones. Of, oh, oh, it's cruel. And it's like, well, yeah. actually, the animal has everything it needs. But it's very low in stress. Mm. But so, it's, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's important that they start sharing more. So, yeah, I was having to write about, like, you know, where the animals are going, where they come from. And the, just teaching people about zoos, actually. Cause I'll t- quickly say this. So, so for, I worked with someone at Chestington Zoo, which mm. is where I work, who was the stud book keeper... So there's stud bookkeepers that are in charge of the movement of all one species of animal. Right. I know, I'm getting really curious. No, no, it's not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really interested. I'm interested because it's like, it just sounds like they've got the little black book for that particular animal, exactly right? exactly what it is. Yeah. And when I say black book, it is a book. Wow. It's a book and an online. It's now more online, but when I was yeah. there, it was a book. Um, and so she was in charge of white rhino within wow. Europe. So uh-huh. the movement of just, not rhino, but just white rhino. So yeah. she would have a database of all these individuals, when one's born, it goes on. And then she was in charge of deciding which rhino went where for what breeding program. It was like yeah. a huge game of rhino chess. Like, yeah. you know, I'm moving back uh-huh. there to control the gene pool. Of course. Yeah. And so it's incredible the amount of communication that all yeah. these have. Yeah. Damn, Russ, mad. So she's like basically, you know, the the, the dating uh, the dating app. <laughs> she's the, the biggest the, rhino pimp out there. The matchmaker. <laughs> the matchmaker, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. It. Exactly yeah, yeah. what she is. I like pimps better. Pimps better. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it, it was mm. great, and it, I, I learned a lot doing that, um, yeah. and I had to work with a lot of zookeepers um, to try and get my information correct, because I didn't know everything cool. all the time, so yeah. Because that sounds like a lot of work, that, so yeah, really, yeah. you got to really know you're beyond yourself. Mm. Did, you did the talks as well, obviously, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so it, it was really... This is kind of where I got into comedy, mm. I guess, because I, I would write the talks alongside my manager, and then we would present them to each other, then we'd get the team in to watch us do them, and then they would go out there and do them. Mm-hmm. And we got really protective over them because we were like, no, this information has to be like this. These are the these are the things we're pushing. Yeah. So some of my team sometimes would try and put their own spin on it. And that's great. And they did. And some people tried to do other things. I was like, please don't do that. Yeah. And but, but it was great because you would end up mixing your own jokes in and yeah. banter with the audience. <laughs> you could, I could just see you. Like because you're the team leader, right? Yeah. You yeah. could see at the top of the road go, no. These are the jokes. <laughs> these, I have written these. Totally. <laughs> Not your jokes. They're shit. <laughs> they're the shit jokes. These your are the penguin cracker jokes. <laughs> yeah, them out. Totally. Exactly. They were big audiences we had at the zoo. Yeah, and we get our penguin presentation, which of yeah. course had a big audience. In yeah. summer, you'd be talking about two, three hundred people. Mm. It was not just like thirty people gathered around the enclosure. There was a big seat. So you, I was expecting you know, an 18-year-old to go out there and do this talk. And they did. And I was, it was so amazing to see these young people that were really inspired by nature. Because um, so I was about 24 at the time, so I wasn't even, you know, I was yeah. still young. But these were, like, fresh out of college. Or, oh, yeah. or, or just out of um, the A-level kind of stage. Mm. So, 
and they were coming up so have a bit of training then the next thing yeah. they'd whack the mic on they'd go and go welcome everyone and you're like god these guys sickening. have got confidence yeah sickening great. <laughs> uh, well done <laughs> <laughs> I think it helps when you talk about stuff you're passionate that's about that's true you, just, you, just, true. you could talk to a thousand people mm. and you wouldn't get yeah you're right you're right yeah like you yeah. just got used to the mic and getting used to talking in front of people yeah absolutely and then where did you do your first gig then I did my first gig when I was really young. I was 18. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and this was just a one-off. But when I was travelling, I was in Australia, and I got, <laughs> I was slightly intoxicated. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> I got pushed onto... No, it wasn't an open mic. We went to go and watch an open mic. Okay. And then I wrote my name down, just for a laugh. And then he said, actually... And then my friend told the guy that ran this club in Sydney. He went, oh, um, yeah, Ryan does it all the time. Yeah. Ryan's been doing stand-up uh, from a very young age in England. <laughs> and he said, oh, well, we've had an act to pull out. So Ooh. does he want to do the 10 minutes middle? And she was like, yeah, 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 like, he'll be fine. Wow. So they put me on for 10 minutes. And it was some of the worst comedy I've ever done, obviously, because it was my first ever gig. But it, it pushed me onto it. And then so after that, when I came back to England, I then worked at the zoo, kind of did a few gigs, but nothing yeah. much. And then... Probably, in, yeah, that's then about four years back from now, that's when I've really pushed on with it. Do you remember your first opening bit? They've got their own Hyde Park. They've got their own Hyde Park. They've got one too. Was it, was it like a cafe in the Sydney Opera House, uh, like the second this cafe section? It, <laughs> no, it was this little underground pub. It was, yeah. it was real New York kind of style, like an old brick built, like brick cellar kind yeah. of thing. It was really nice. I'm trying to think what my opening line was about that. It would have been something hack. So it was, it was some, about your tar- some about your height or something. Wasn't oh, it? yeah, definitely. It was <laughs> so something it be to do it? with me looking like the Weasley twins. Oh, right. Right. It would have been something awful yeah. that I still do now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God, it's my big clothes. I mean, it works. It works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah. No, um, I think it was something like that. Like, and it was, oh, God, I remember this joke. It wasn't even funny. I cringe when I said I was talking about being on a plane, being six or seven and being on a plane yeah. and trying to use plane toilets. Yeah. It wasn't funny, it was just a sentence, it had no punchline, it had no build up, no punchline. It was just like, I can't use plain toilets, and people went, We can see why. Yeah. <laughs> see, just a fact. Isn't just it? a fact about me, guys, I piss on my knees when I'm in the train, <laughs> yeah. plain toilets. So, yeah, that was it, it was yeah. awful. I think the video's on YouTube, I need to take that down. Your family, like, when you decide to go full time with comedy, how did they take that? My dad was really, he's really supportive. Well, they both are. They're both really supportive. My dad is just like, I'm proud of you for just going for what you want to yeah, do. Great. Good luck. Just make sure you plan it properly. He's a real stri- uh, strategic kind of person. Mm. My mum just instantly shit herself. Oh, like, wow. yeah. like, she was, she's, she's an accountant. So, <laughs> she was instantly oh, like, no. totally. but where will your money come from? Exactly. And it's like, uh, at the moment, I don't know. Yeah, so that, yeah. I mean, that, it was terrifying for me. I've never been in a scenario where I'm making, literally making my own money. And my mum, I don't think anyone in my family actually has ever done that. Yeah. So it was a real like, oh, wait, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's it. She always does that. Like whenever, whenever I do something like this, she always always like, what? but 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 what are you mm. going to do? So like, I'm trying mm. to figure it out. Like mm-hmm. she did it when I went vegan. When oh, I went yeah? vegan, I told her. So I went vegan in November 2015, mm. and I told my mum just like I came out as a vegan. Yeah, like, <laughs> I was a that's vegan what it felt like. And a comedian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it felt like. I felt like I had to sit my parents down and be like, um, so I've been feeding a few things. Um, but I said, oh, just a heads up, um, I'm going to be going, I was vegetarian for about a month, but I was, I'm going to be vegan, so I'm not going to be eating dairy, and I'm not going to be eating meat. And my mum just went, oh, so close to Christmas. Like, that was the main worry for her. And then she, she asked me the weirdest question I've been asked since being vegan. She just turned around and she went, but what, what are you going to do about the bacon? And I was like, I just probably won't buy it. Just probably leave it. As if I had a bacon factory that I had to close yeah. down. And she's like, Where, what are you going to do about your income? And yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole bacon, the whole thing. <laughs> what about the whole bacon yeah. franchise you've been running? And, yeah. uh, and also, I've been feeling really funny recently as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I might become a clown. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's where it's at. It's where my heart is, you know, just yeah. jokes and, and joy and just want to stare at bewildered people occasionally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, though. I think... I, Sometimes I, a lot of my family, and I don't know if they'll hear this and be bothered about it, but yeah. a lot of my family will be like, well, you know, a job's a job. Yeah. That is that kind of attitude, and I mm. never settled for that. Mm. I don't just want a job. I want, I want a nice career, I want a mm. life, I want to live mm. and do what, exactly what I want to do. Yeah. 
God, that sounds cheesy. That's, that, that's the biggest millennial fantastic. statement I've ever I think, made. I just want to do what I want to do. And so I started reading The Secret and uh, yeah. so I'm man- <laughs> manifesting everything. It's, it's yeah. coming to me. I've got my vision board at home and that is what's that's happening. What I've got a vision board, that's I meditate, and yeah. um, then I have avocado toast. And yeah, that's and some, uh, with an egg, just, you know, just like the, <laughs> I do in LA. Because that's what everyone does now. So you've been gigging for four years now? Yeah, I'd say properly going for about mm. four years, yeah. Okay, what was the moment when you thought, yeah, this is it. This is this is it for me. Like this is there's nothing else. This is the thing that I want. Two years in, I hit a spot where I was like, I can't write anything. I was really struggling to mm. change my material. I couldn't really do it. And then I got home one night and I I remembered a story, and I said to my housemate, I said, I want to. I, can I tell you the story quickly? I want to see if you find this funny. Mm. And he was like, Yeah, sure, go for it. So we <laughs> I turned the TV off, and I was like, Right, this is it. And I was like, when I was. 16, my dad, mum and dad took me to St. Lucia and it's a story about me getting very, very drunk mm. and being very hungover and the next day we had to go on a big tour on a jeep mm. and it was just a vomit of mess. Mm-hmm. Just, it was horrible. So I told him this story and he cried with laughter at different points Yeah. and all I did was relay it as I remembered it yeah. and that's how I wrote this bit and I was like, well, okay, so maybe I do a story because mm. I'd already always been used to doing like bits and punches and just you know, rubbish rubbish little stuff and then I thought oh maybe I've got something here so I wrote it down I got it to about a 10 minute bit mm. so the, yeah, the first time I ever did it I had a gig booked down at Comedia mm. in, um, in Brighton mm-hmm. and it's my first spot down there ever I was like I'm going to go in with a new bit of material I've never mm. done and it went very very well great and I was like oh my god this is maybe I can tell stories mm-hmm. maybe this is what I can do so I went back home and I rewrote it and I, t- I made it a bit longer and I, I started to remember other bits. Spoke to my mum and dad about it. They were like, oh yeah, but what, do you remember doing that bit? And I was like, mm. oh God, yeah, I can put that in. Yeah. So now I've got, I had this story where I could do uh, a 10 minute version, a 15 minute version and I started to take it into competitions and do a really condensed five mm. minute. And it really motivated me remembering stuff, that story. So I was like, you know what? I, I can do this. This is what mm. I can do. I just mm. need to remember. I need to sit mm. back and think of my life. Yeah. So that, yeah, that, I think that was the moment where I was like, no, it's all right. You can just, all you've got to do is remember and be true to yourself. I think mm. that's where I was like, I'm not one of these comics that writes joke jokes. Mm. I'm not, I'm okay with observational stuff, but not massively. I think I'm just a person that wants to tell stories from mm-hmm. my life. Mm. And that was the moment where I realized I could do that. Mm. So I think that's where I know, knew that's, that's what, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been to the Fringe a few times as well? Yeah, a couple of times. A couple and of what times. did you do the last few times you went up? I just, I, you know, I watch more than I gig when I go oh, up there because I, I, I don't know, like, I only go up for a couple of days. Mm. I've never gone up for more than, like, four days, which I need to change. But I'm quite strategic, like, my dad does stuff like this, so I'll go up. I've only gone up for a couple of days, and I'm like, I could gig, like, all day, mm. but then what am I going to get out of it? Like, mm. you know, let's scope things out. So I prefer to go and watch the shows where they're meant to be performed. So mm. people spend all year writing these shows and getting it ready. And it's like, I want to see it at the Fringe. Sure. And so that's what I do mainly, just go around and go and see shows. But who would be the people that you'd like, kind of go, oh, I need to go and learn from this person to see what the, how it's done? Like you, cause you have, it sounds like you have the people in mind. You go, right, I'm going to go watch this person to see. They've spent the whole year crafting this whole you know, experience. Yeah, that's... Oh God, who... It's different all the time because I think being on Facebook, you see, especially friends of ours, where you see their posters go up. I like to go and see people that I know go and mm. do their shows and stuff like that. So I didn't go up last year. I'm trying to think who I went to go and see the year before. I'm really bad at remembering stuff like this. I like to go and watch people like Daniel Kitson when mm-hmm. he does a show up there or something like that. I would always go and see that show. Jarla Fregan, mm-hmm. I love his shows. Just any, to be honest, even mm. people, I just take flyers off the street and just go and watch. Mm-hmm. I just like being part of it and helping yeah. support it, really. But you know yourself, you get to a stage as well when you go, no, I, I could probably get better at this at home now because I've worked mm-hmm. out the writing ability. And you have the, the just the sixth sense of a piece of material. Oh, no, there's a joke in that. There's, if I just look at this for long enough and I, and I <laughs> yeah, practice this enough, it's, good, yeah. it's coming out, you know? Yeah. And then you get to that, that there's that like, kind of sweet spot when you're like, right, get a few notes and you go, okay, right. And you see, like, say, I, I like to do a, put like a, a limit of 20 jokes. If like, yeah. I'm going to sit down and do my writing. Before I used to be like, right, I'm going to do all the writing today. It's happening. 
eight o'clock in the morning till whenever the fuck I finish today. I'm do- and you, and I'd hate it. I yeah, would like yeah. get to a stage. You go, you're going really well the first couple of hours. I'm like, okay, right, that's fine. I'm gonna put the ambient noise for the coffee shop in the background just to kind of feel like I'm out. <laughs> and then um, do you actually do that? I do. Yeah, I do that. That's too. amazing. It, do, that uh, it does help though. It does help. Does a it? It does a bit. If you have a few coffees, you know, just get in the zone. And then, uh, <laughs> and then I kind of like, and then that works for a couple of hours. And then that yeah it starts to kind of ebb a little bit. Then you're like, okay. Then you just have to turn that off because it starts to really piss you off, and then you're like, okay. And then after that, you're you're like just on your own. You're like, okay, just duking it through the last couple of hours. And then I get to that stage. I'm like, you've got the last like five jokes left. Like, and you can you're just really just trying to get through the last few pieces of paper because then you start organizing little bits of paper. You have got different yeah. shape pieces here, but all the, those shapes with that. But then you have got little bits which connect with these bits. And like, okay, no, that doesn't work. Oh, I need to do these bits at a time. But the last joke you do for the 20 version of this story that I do, like do 20 jokes a day. Yeah. The 20th joke, it seems to just come out in a chunk. You mm-hmm. just go, because you're in the zone, because you're like, this is the last one, you're excited, but don't, and it comes out, per- well not perfectly, but as well as it in the it's correct great, yeah. order it's going to come out for now. And that's what I kind of, that's what I, I do. Is that how you do, because I don't write anything down. Oh, right. Not when I'm wow. first I can't. I can't mm. sit there with a pen and paper. I can't even make bullet points. Mm. I just sit there and I get so like, I'm just uninspired when I do that. I have to... I don't have to have a drink. That makes me sound... <laughs> but it's very nice to have a little bottle of beer that yeah. I can just... I'll be like, right, I'm, I'm just going to be in the bedroom for a bit, which sounds yeah. creepy as when you say that. So you have yeah. I'm just going upstairs for a bit. I'm writing, I promise. Yeah. And I will just kind of talk to myself. Oh. Talk to myself out loud. Mm. And that's how... And, and then once I've gone through it in my head... But like, cool, and I'll just make one word bullet points like a list, and that's yeah. that's enough. Wow. I don't need to do any more than that. I'm, wow. I'm quite. I've got a weird brain where I can memorise exactly, mm. almost word for word, yeah. how I thought about it. Ah, no, I I, I have, to have little because I have little inklings of like a little nuggets. You know, it's got word here, word there, and that's it. But on the phone as well, you know. And then I just I get paranoid because I'm like, if that phone goes, all those words are gone. So I need to kind of go put it into the daddy book, you know. You know what you should do? This is what I do. Um, I There's a few comics that if I have an idea, mm. I will send them a voice note on mm. WhatsApp. Oh, so yeah. I will just go, okay, this is a bit, I'm going to say it like I'm going to say it on stage. And mm. I'll send them the bit. And mm. I'm like, you can react if you want. And, but it, the benefit is then it's on your WhatsApp. So yeah. if you lose your phone, they've still got it That's on true. their yeah, yeah. That's true. It's a good idea. So using your friend as a hard drive. Might try that, but I use the the, the Elef- is it the Evernote as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I think send yeah. that to yourself as well, but it's like, um, but yeah, I get, I, it loads of backups. It's all about the backups. Really. Oh yeah, yeah, three times, aren't you? Yeah, it's uh, gone yeah. forever. Okay. Yeah, definitely, just in case, in yeah. case the house burns down, you know, got a buried like safe, yeah, dry yeah. place in the in the. So you need it on your phone, on the cloud, and on Google yeah, Drive, just in and case. Then, yeah, yeah, and then that solar flare hits everything, and we're totally fucked. Like, yeah, yeah, that's you're it. done. You're so you're doing the podcast, you're yes. writing jokes, and you're looking after dogs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you do any more uh, anything else? Well, what? No. Jesus. It's okay, it's not a pre- it wasn't like a no, oh, right. do anything else. Right, that's not great enough. <laughs> well, that's it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I mean, yeah. like during the week, I guess, like, yeah, so the dog dog thing does, does take up quite a lot of time. I walk so much. I must walk mm. about eight miles a day, yeah. eight to ten miles a day, easy. Great. Like um, walking different dogs and stuff. Um, and then I'm, I'm gigging in the evening. I'm doing a lot of gigs, um, like the one we're doing tonight, actually, mm. the, the animal charity one. And I'm mm. getting on, getting booked for a lot of animal based stuff, Great. which is awesome. So, I'm working with this, there's a guy called Simon Watt who runs this Ugly Animal Preservation Society, which is the best thing I've ever heard of. So he basically promotes ugly, endangered animals and he books four comics down and we we all go to a museum, Mm. somewhere like that. So this Tuesday actually we've got a gig, I'm going to plug this as well. If you're in London, go to the Grant Museum of Zoology Mm. where uh, myself, Beck Hill, Sarah Bonetto Mm. will be doing 10 minutes on our chosen ugly animal. And we just do 10 minutes based on... So I'll be doing 10 minutes based on the Mitchell's Rainforest Snail. Okay. Which is endangered. There's only 500 left. Mm. That's not many, is it? That is not many. That is not many. I would go as far as say that's not enough. Is it a big (laughs) snail? Yeah, it's fairly large. It's a land snail, so it's about... Probably about... About the size of like a... About seven centimetres long. Oh, that's pretty big. It's pretty big, yeah. Mm -hmm. Compared to our garden snail, Mm. so... But they're only in this small patch of rainforest. So yeah, we we all do these gigs and... We, we usually go to a museum and it attracts a lot of people, man. And then the museum, the audience vote for their favourite and yeah. then that becomes a mascot of that museum. 
Okay. So it's, it's cool. Right. So I'm doing lots of stuff like that as yeah. well, which is the best thing about it is that it makes you write specific material. Totally. So now I've got a 10 minute snail set that I didn't have previously. Really niche stuff. Like <laughs> really that. niche, yeah. That's great though. I just got to find a snail charity I want to put on a night. <laughs> but then the people can remember go, oh, you know, that's right. The guy does the thing about the, st- the snail guy. Yeah, he's slow at first, but you get nuts. Yeah, that's back. it. No, no, I know. I know. Sorry. So sorry. <laughs> so sorry. That's, it. that's great, man. And so yeah. with Beck Hill as well, and what, 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 yeah, uh, what's everyone else doing though? What are, they other, uh, what are the other animals you're so up against? Beck, oh, Beck, what did she, she did. I can't remember the full name of it. It's a type of parrotfish. It's called okay. buck teeth. <laughs> right. <laughs> which is just hilarious. Yeah. Um, so Beck does a lot of her flip chart stuff, yeah. which is, is fantastic. And she does a flip chart for this fish. I, I assume she's doing the same one because right. this night we're doing on Tuesday is actually an Australian species special. So my so that's why I'm definitely doing this now again because yeah. it's from the east coast of Australia. I'm pretty yeah. sure the parrotfish that Beck does in Australia. So whether she'll go with that animal or pick another one. Right. I don't know what Sarah is doing because I've never seen Sarah do these games oh. before. So that's exciting. It's, that's why it's so exciting yeah. because you're like, oh, get to see this person. Mm-hmm. They have to do 10 minutes. I'm really yeah. interested to see what it is. But they're a fantastic night and they're on Twitter and stuff and they've got books that come out mm-hmm. and to help. It started with an animal called blob, the, the, the Blobfish, which I don't know if you've ever uh, yes, seen. Yes, pink thing. Yeah, the pink yeah. blob, yeah. essentially. And it looks like a weird Pokemon mm. that, is shit. So yeah, it just he just started it and, and done that, and he's been on an episode of my podcast as well. I got Simon on because um, he's Great. a very knowledgeable guy. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, yeah, so I've been I've been doing a lot of nights like that, and then we, I run the Comedy Wire still, mm. um, which is a night I run in Kingston and Bracknell. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a Bracknell show last night, which was yeah good, but like I said, too challenging. Yeah, we had an interesting crowd in, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. lovely large audience. 10% were tricky. Yeah. <laughs> 10% dickheads is not a bad yeah, place yeah, to be. Yeah, let's just say it. They were absolute <laughs> fucking idiots. Oh, like, no. this, if, you know when you get an audience, you ever have this where it's just like, it's, it's heckling, but it's like random word Tourette's. Mm. Like, at one yeah. point, someone just shouted out the word patio. I don't, do you know what I mean? Like, patio! I was like, we're not, what? It's not improv, okay? It's not, yeah, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you mean. I mean, I know yeah. what a patio is. Yeah. And, it was yeah. just, it was just absolutely bizarre. Wow! And it really threw, it threw me off. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, was, it was weird. So but yes, yeah. you know, I so say you've had a tough week as well. You know, I think so, that's what made it worse. So it's yeah. like, oh, I just don't have the the joy in me to deal with these. I said to them stories. at one point, I was like, "This is a great night. We're having loads of fun." I said, "But you guys are pushing me towards murder, mm. and I will." T- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm on the edge. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm, I'm giving you three chances now. Yeah, the next, yeah. next time. The it's, knife it's gets sharp and it's like that's hangman. It. You get another vowel yeah. wrong and that's it. I will release the hounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, fucking Murphy will lick you to death. That's, that's exactly funny enough, right. Murphy is the name my first dog actually had. It. Was it? Murphy, yeah, yeah, randomly. It was like half Alsatian, half Collie. It oh, was, wow. Yeah, it was that's vicious, a good cross. Vicious to everyone else, but to us, oh, it's lovely. lovely. <laughs> no, it was great. It was brilliant. Brilliant guard dog. Uh, <laughs> my my mum uh, let the dog out and she was... Like to run, this <laughs> just sounds like such a stupid idea, right? <laughs> but wait, but wait. The dog used to run alongside the Jeep, okay? Uh, to give him a bit of a run, okay? Anyway, dogs are smart. And the dog decided to run across the field and was like, ah, gotcha! And in front of the car, and my mom drove right over the dog. Oh my god. Yeah. But I didn't find that out until like about, like about four years afterwards, because I came home from school and my mom's crying. I was like, what's going on? Oh, um, Oh, you know, Murphy uh, had a heart attack. I was like, okay. Four years later, I found out he had a heart attack after the four wheels rolled over his head. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I was like, oh, no. Sad the end. But hey, that was it. But, yeah. you know, that was it. Well, I mean, I'd have had a heart attack too if the car had rolled over my head. I would have been, yeah. But yeah, it was uh, so yeah, it was one of those moments, you know. But, I, but the, yeah. But I love hearing about different crossbreeds of dogs because mm. I think dog breeds are hilarious mm. in regards to what people like because it's such a weird, like, I don't know, because like, dogs are you, your two dogs are lovely, mm-hmm. but they are such stupid animals. <laughs> they really are, and I love dogs. <laughs> yeah. But I just find this whole God, you know like the pug and the French oh, bulldogs. Like you people like people like now. I just love animals, and next to them they've got this like mess of nature. Just mm. going, <laughs> 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 and can't no. breathe. You're like, yeah, you really like animals, mm-hmm. don't you? Um, it's, it's like you've bred sadness. Yeah, that's what you've done. You've bred something that is struggling yeah. to breathe. Yeah, it would be like the, the and British like, bulldog. Just no, all the health problems in the world yeah. into one into one being. Blob. Yeah, that's it. It's no fun for it. Like you know, we looked after the other day. We had a cross, a, a Alsatian crossed with a Great Dane. Mm. 
It was massive. Yeah. It had the biggest body, but a small head. It had an Alsatian <laughs> head, but a great Dane big body. Wow. Yeah. It was really weird. And my, it was the biggest dog we had looked after in the house, and we had him for two nights. Mm-hmm. And my housemate came downstairs and went, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it was huge, and it was really dark in coloration as well. Yeah. And it was like, a, it was a really dark day. It was like, really overcast. It was just mm. like, just, the only thing that was missing was lightning. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Lightning. Lightning. There's a wolf the, in the corner. Glowing eyes. Yeah, glowing eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's really friendly. <laughs> That's it. Do, do, you, uh, do you do any writing with any anyone else apart from, uh, you know, do, do you write with your missus? Uh, no, God, no. Layla's never even seen me perform. Right. Why? Ever. Couldn't um, take it? No, she... Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that's... I'm not saying you're wussing no, out. I'm I just don't saying know that, why. Just, yeah. I think... It's difficult. It's a it? mix between I wouldn't be comfortable yeah. and I don't think she would because we try and keep our work separate that's cool. in relationship. Mm. And it's, uh, no matter how much people say, no, on me on stage, I am just me. Mm. It's like, no, there's not. There is a, there is a stage you mm. and not quite you. And maybe mm. not for everyone, but certainly for me, I am very much myself, but I'm myself extreme. I'm mm. not like that all the time. I am very different. So I've, maybe I just, we like to keep that a bit separate. So, when it comes to writing, which is really funny, like a lot of the stuff Layla writes on her on her website, a lot of her articles and stuff, has always got a bit of humour mm. in it. And she did actually, we wrote a joke, actually we did do this joke together, mm. which I now do on stage, mm. about weddings, about people. Recently, I don't know if you noticed this, I'm really sorry. Well, have you, you're married? I'm married, yeah. I'm, okay, I really hope you haven't had this at your wedding. It's going to be very <laughs> awkward. No, go with it. Record. Yeah. Uh, where people have like the five foot high letters that spell love. No. Have you seen these at weddings? No. No, I, but you know, like, but like, what? But, so, yeah, but it, it, honestly, all, everyone I know that's got married, I've, my friends got married on Friday, just gone, they haven't, I've have not seen a picture of it yet. Yeah. And if they don't have it, I'm going to be very proud of them. Mm-hmm. Because every single wedding, they'll just have love spelled out somewhere. And I don't understand this. Yeah. It's like a reminder of the feeling that you're supposed to be feeling that day. Yeah. You don't have it at a funeral. You don't have the word grief written up the side of the church. You don't yeah. have the words tick tock at your nan's 90th birthday yeah. party. Yeah. Um, so we decided at yeah. our wedding along the dance floor, we're just going to have the words tolerate. Yeah. We have yeah, a lot more letters in that. Yeah, we found out it's £200 a letter. Oh, so we're going to short it down to just meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still quite pricey. So yeah, we do, because we, we kind of talk about stuff. We like taking the piss out of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's quite, and that is my sense of humour. Just good. a constant piss taking. So that's good, It's a good yeah. important for the relationship, I think, definitely, to yeah. you know, be able to laugh at yourselves for sure. Oh, definitely, yeah. So we, we definitely do. and But yeah, we kind of, she she's so supportive though. She shares all the comedy. So Ha Ha oh. Land, um, she shares all the promo for it. Which is very nice. Did you see the actual film as well? Yeah, God. Because you, you I know you misses. cried at the film. Did you see oh, it? Oh, no, I didn't see it. No, I, I, no, I didn't see it. I'm not, really into, not really into musicals, to be oh, honest. I'm you, not. You'd like it. Would I? Yeah. You know, maybe. Oh, no, give it a go. All right, I'll give it a go. I'll try it. I'll try do, it. Do a trip. But we saw it at, we went to an everyman cinema. Because we're doing all right. And oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, because it was such a... The film was okay. Obviously, it was, a, it was the big Hollywood production, wasn't sure. it? So it was just over done with marketing for mm. a very basic musical film but we wanted to go to like a theatre cinema to go and watch a film that was kind of old style film modern mm. it was all that kind of very theatrical kind of production I guess and it was nice you know you could sit there with a whiskey and enjoy mm. the film it was really really good oh, wow. um, but there was a bit at the end I, you know what it was we had just watched a film called um, A Monster Calls have oh, you yeah. ever seen I that think, yeah, I think so. yeah, yeah. little kid with the tree monster thing right. that Liam Neeson does a voice yes. for it is heartbreaking. Oh. It's such a good film. It's so... If, if anyone's not watched it, watch A Monster Court. Okay. And just... I would say watch it on your own as well. Yeah. And I... That is the most I've ever cried at a film. Wow. Like, I've ne- I didn't even... You know sometimes when you know it's going to be a sad film and yeah. you're like, I kind of want to cry because I yeah. look like a dick if I don't. Yeah, right. And I didn't even do it. I was watching it. <laughs> and before I... Like, towards the... It's only yeah. sad at the end. It's a really nice film. And there's one scene at the end. Yeah. And I just... Before I even knew it, I had tears literally just coming down my oh, face. No. I went, oh, shit. It was a surprise. Yeah, I've right. never cried like that. Where I didn't know I was doing it until I felt the tears. I, I watched... Uh, I watched with the family the other day. Uh, oh, what was it? The, the, the one about the dog who dies, like, five... Seven times or something like that in the film. 
and it's got Dennis Quaid as the main actor at the end when he's older. But the the it, basically it's a story for oh a dog's life. That's it, easy enough to remember. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And the dog dies like seven times. So instead of getting the Marley and Me effect where you just get sad once, yeah, you get sad seven times. <laughs> and I was going. <laughs> So they're going, not going to cry in front of the family. Not going to cry. Not, not, not going to let it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible. For, well, yeah. I say terrible. I just, I get, I get sucked into films like this. I'm really, I put a lot of emotion into it. I, I emotionally feel the characters. Because hmm. we went to go and watch a film called You're The Room. sensitive, very sensitive. I'm a very sensitive guy. <laughs> I went to go and watch, I'm just very stressed. I went to go and watch a film called Room. Have you seen that film? Uh, no that's again a brilliant film oh, the, the kid should have won an Oscar mm. for that he was brilliant in it mm. and I think the girl I, oh, I can't remember and I'm terrible with names but the actress that was in it she was fantastic and she won an Oscar for it yeah. or she was definitely nominated uh-huh. and I cried at that and then we went to go and watch a monster calls about six months later I cried at that and then I went to go and watch La La Land so I think I was just in a very yeah, yeah, theme yeah. of oh well I've got to cry it's a film yeah, it's time um, because it's not really sad at the end. There's just a bit of a, oh, moment where oh. I was like, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Commit fully to it. I like Commit that. fully, yeah. I'm like, really putting myself oh, into this. Look at this get wet eyes. I mean, it must just go, f- you need yeah. to get into it though, is it? It's like yeah. laughing. Yeah. You must just throw yourself in fully. Yeah, it's yeah. an art form. Come on, throw your emotions into yeah. it. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I did see the film. Jake saw the film. Mm. I can't even remember how we came up with the title for the show. I think we both said... Because the, the title before, we were going to call it Two Leggy Blondes. Right. <laughs> because why not? And but Jake isn't that tall. He's also... No, and I'm not blonde. <laughs> I think it was if you merged us both together. Oh, right, okay. I mean, the winter, there was no logical... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I think I'm not, <laughs> yeah. I'm not destroying your premise yet. I'm not trying to I think destroy. Jake really liked the title Two Leggy Blondes. Right, okay, um, cool. And... Then I was like, yeah, maybe. Hmm. Mm. And then one of us said, what about, we do it like based on a film. So we just find a popular film. I said, La La Land was popular. He said, yeah, mm. what would you call it? And I was like, we'll, we'll just call it Ha Ha Land. Yeah. And we both instantly went, that's brilliant. How has no one done that yet? Yeah, exactly. So the poster, I love for yeah. it. I'm really happy with how it came out. Yeah. Check it out. Because <laughs> we were doing a lot of dancing poses to oh. try and get the right one. Yeah? Yeah. And then I've got a flyer. I'll show you the flyer in a minute. You know, I, I hate pic- I hate having a picture taken now. I hate, Do you like, hate I it? hate I hate the, pro- especially the pro ones. I'm like, it's, no, it's never good enough. Because you've got to, you're, you're, you're committed to yourself. You're, you're yeah. fully, this is what it is. You can't, yeah, that's out. the thing. For, and, for this one, we were definitely yeah. we have to get this pose yeah. right, and it took age. It took oh. about an hour and a half. Layla took the pictures for us. You missed it. Yes, yeah. Uh, she. T- we, we literally went around the corner of the house where there's a brick wall. Great. And the lighting was perfect. So we went. We've got to do them now. Yes. So me and Jake quickly dressed up quite smart. When I say smart. I wore a white cowboy shirt and yeah. like these black jeans, mm. and we both just tried to like awkwardly stand in the pose mm-hmm. and they was like yeah this looks terrible <laughs> she's like you guys are so rigid <laughs> yeah, and we're brilliant. like what we really like and she's like and, and then later just showed have neither of you ever done ballet and I was like you know what no I grew up in Bracknell yeah. no I did not do ballet yeah. and she was like just try running at each other and holding the pose yeah. and in our heads we're like this is never going to work yeah. we ran held the pose got the stat and that's the one we went with brilliant. it was perfect Nice. So that's what you need. You need to just, if you ever do a promo shot, just go, I right, aim the camera there, I'm going to run, pose, snap. Right? Yeah, that's it. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't try and create it. Don't create it, just <laughs> that's where you get the natural that's shot. That's it. Otherwise, so, you'll get all kind of like weird ticks and, and yeah, things yeah, happen to your face. Happens. And it's terrible, isn't you it? You end up going, maybe I should raise this eyebrow yeah. and look up there. And then <laughs> when you look back, you need that, that normal comedian pose of, uh, Yeah, like, totally. The, the, the hack, one eyebrow. Oh, yeah. man. Mm-hmm. That's it. You know, like, did like, I just say that? Like, <laughs> confused and sort of maybe look well, maybe uh, at a different angle angry or confused or like yeah. I'm or a bit touching in the mouth going whoopsie yeah, like, yeah, it's it's, there's so it's, many bad ones it's, it's, it's terrible isn't so it so you need to yeah, get it. to really just jump in the whole face moves together not one bit at a time <laughs> oh the, the eyebrow here and the yeah. smile there oh yeah this looks natural you end up looking a bit like something out of Borat or something yeah, yeah you're really trying to piece it together yeah. but yeah we're looking it, that's going to be so we're working I'm doing a lot of writing for that show at the moment oh, I'm great. really trying to do that mm. and just jokes is it just jokes or yeah I guess like at first we didn't think it was going to be there was going to be any premise to the show because mm. it was just based on Ha Ha Land but based on that poster so we were like oh we'll just write and then me and Jake met up and said should we compare kind of notes and it turns out we're both writing a similar premise of mm both 
trying to create like you know this is what we don't like about the world this is what we would love if that happened yeah. and so we're like we're almost trying to create our ha ha land of everything's oh, fine okay. now we're like, we oh, fix right. everything yeah. so we said okay the show's kind of got a direction my, my bit I'm kind of writing a bit about uh, animals I'll start it about that and then it'll go on to a bit about kind of this year about mm. you know ending 2016 year of hell mm-hmm. going into this year going everything's going to be okay mm. we, we're all hopeful and mm. then it, it wasn't and still isn't and kind of what I've been dealing with I'm going to be a bit more raw about myself on stage I think for this a bit more like I've been dealing with this it it doesn't sound funny but no no I totally get it yeah more vulnerable yeah yeah you really I think it gets to a point where I think especially like after we've done about four years you want to be a bit more you want to open up a bit more especially on a show like this when it's 25 minutes you're like Mm. I've got enough time because we're going to do 10 minutes at the end Mm. where we both come back on stage and we sit there and we have a chat with the audience yeah. and we close the show like that. And you'll hug. And we'll hug. <laughs> we might even do a lip, a lip sync um, oh. to see if there's a song that we can... A su- really? A song in it as well? Oh, Amazing. Well, really? we might have to. because oh, great. Got, our worry is that so many people are going to see this poster and mm. go, brilliant, yeah. it's a musical. Exactly. That's and it's, it. an, it's not a fucking musical. Wow. So we're thinking if we get some of those people in... Mm. We might have to put a song at the end. We might lip sync one of the songs from the films at the end. Yeah. Just like bring out the ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready, guys. I'm just, sorry, can this I plug this it. in? Can I just plug this can in? Plug- <laughs> I can't jack from my ukulele. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's so, so, yeah, that's, that's what we might, that's how we might close the show. With the, mur- with the, with the, with the salt. <laughs> Get some dry Tambourine. Ice. Nice. <laughs> it'd be great. It'd be great. <laughs> little, uh, was it, a rhythm, what do they call it? A, a, it's, what, is it a rhythm board? Is it a rhythm box? Oh, the little ring. <laughs> yes, got it. Rhythm box, yeah. That's it, one of those. So we That'd might nice. do something like that. We'll That'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It'll be a good night. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. And Jake's the other person you do some writing with. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah, I meet up with Jake regularly anyway. Outside the show, we meet up, we do a bit of writing. Who else do I meet up with? There's not, to be honest, because of the way I write, mm. the way I just talk it out, it's more I send WhatsApp voice mm. notes to. So there's a few people... Um, Callie Beaton, mm. I sometimes send a few ideas to, yeah. uh, John Maher, uh, we try to meet up and try and have a few chats. Cressida? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I send a lot of ideas to Cress Great. as a voice note on WhatsApp um, mm. and she sends some back and it's, it's just, I love sending things like that because it's very natural. The person gets mm. to hear it the way you're saying it rather mm. than you're reading um, what they've typed. So yeah, that's, that, that's how I kind of do it. I just go, do you think this has got legs? Mm. Or I just do it on stage mm-hmm. straight away. Uh, do you do improv as well? I've never done improv. Oh no, I reckon, I don't know if I'd be good at it. Like you don't sound like you need any any stage confidence at all. Mm. You're pretty sounding like a pretty set. Yeah, you know, like uh, and it just all, what it did with me was just help get rid of my fear. You know, because I was terrified up there. Oh, like, that yeah. was what gave me energy to too much energy to not yeah. control. You know, put the band back in the box. But yeah, the level one and two really helped me with stuff, and it helped me with like premises and like you know unpacking stuff and going, oh well, what's this? Oh, let's have fun with it and play with it like that. But that's yeah, that's mm. interesting. I've never mm. thought of it do, doing improv ever, really. No, I don't know why. Because I used to, I, I like watching improv. Um, I used to, I used to be a huge fan of Whose Line Is It Anyway. Yeah. When it was on, I was a huge fan of it. I was especially because I was slightly too young to watch the UK one when it was going to be on TV. But when the US one was on TV, I used to watch that all the time. Yeah. Greg Proops and that, you know. Yeah, and Colin Mockery and Ryan Stiles. Right. Yeah, I used to absolutely love them. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, do you write any sitcoms or anything like that? You've got one of the, in the, in the in percolating away back I've there or always, something? You know what's weird about sitcoms is every job I've ever had, mm. I thought this would make a good sitcom. Yeah. And I think everyone has that yeah. idea. I would love to write a sitcom based on my work at the zoo slash theme park yeah. because there were so many characters mm. that weren't there that just wrote the, the, just who they were. Mm. You know, like you have the warning at the beginning of a sitcom saying that some of these are based on characters mm-hmm. uh, or real life character or real life people but have been changed. And yeah. Mine would just be like, these were real people. Yeah. These are their names. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just working at Chesterton's World Adventures, you had so many different groups. You had the zoo people, you had the rides people, you had the welcome admission, mm. you had retail, you had food and beverage, security, gardening, the, yeah. the head office, everything, all on one site. And there was, in peak season, there would be, I think the staff members, about 1,600 staff members, um, including seasonal, uh, seasonal wow. people. It was hilarious. Mm. The environment was hilarious. Yeah. Not meant to be. Yeah. It was just, you would be looking around going, what is going on? Yeah. So yeah, I would love to write a sitcom like that. I think it'd be very... What's the weirdest thing that happened to you while you were working in the zoo? What weird stuff happened? There was so many. I'm trying The to one think. that you kind of go, oh man, like say if you're at a dinner party or something like this, right? And you go, 
fuck with this dinner party and go, I've got to get this. Fucking okay. <laughs> I've got to get this. I've got to get this fucking dinner party going here. This is the one that I always fucking tell to just get everyone on board, to just relax everyone. And if it doesn't go well from here, I've fucking done what I can for this party. You know what I mean? That kind of story. There was, this was before I worked at the zoo. Okay. This is when I was still in college, but I did my work experience. So we had to do four weeks practical work experience somewhere. And I went to Chessington Zoo. Okay. And that, that's how I got the job after as well. And I was working... <laughs> I can tell this, they won't mind. I don't work there, fuck them. <laughs> and <laughs> they, I was on the primate section mm. that day. So each week I was on a different section. And mm. we, I went down with the keeper, who's a great guy, still a good friend of mine. Mm. And it, the gorilla enclosure, I was working with the gorillas that day. Mm. So they had their outdoor pen. It's a great enclosure at Chessington. And then they've got dens in an L shape going around like this. And then there's a kitchenette area here. Okay. I know on the podcast, these people will be like, I cannot picture this. But like, yeah. picture like a room with a corridor behind <laughs> and then a kitchen attached. <laughs> yeah, to right. And um, it had... So the gorillas could get into their dens. Obviously, there was a walkway for us, which we weren't in with the animals. And then yeah. we had access to the kitchen. And there was a big sliding door like this and yeah. going into the kitchen. So we got up in the morning, about you know, quarter to eight in the morning, we were going down there just to do all our food prep uh-huh. for the morning. And we were just talking casually about the Mighty Boosh, out of all things, because the zoo people seem to love the Mighty Boosh. Yeah. And he just unlocked the padlock, and we were just talking, and we went, shh, fucking gorilla sat in the kitchen. <sighs> right. Like, And we just looked and went, shh, and just closed the door again. And he went, um, fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Whoa. And we were both just stood there going... How and why? Yeah. And we're like, what do we do? Because we had a troop of 11, 11 gorillas at the time. So there was potential yeah. for 10 females and one two were back to all have access outside of the enclosure. Well, to say the potential, yeah. they would all have access whether they were all out of it or not. Well, we didn't know. So we locked the door again. So they were contained. They never got out of the actual facility. Yeah. They were contained, but they were in the kitchen bit which was the only access into where they would have got out from for us to close. So we had to look into the, through the window. Yeah. And then, then we saw another two in the kitchen and we're wow. like, oh my God. Wow. And we're like, right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Hmm. So we had to get like, we just got loads of like um, browse food, so like nuts, berries, yeah. bits of, uh, small bits of bark, mm. dog biscuits and stuff. Mm. Around the corner and we started to like feed it into a mini closure. They all went around. They're like, woohoo! Oh, went great. around. Yeah. And then we kind of, well, James, I didn't snuck in and saw the door that had opened and yeah. locked it done. But the what they did to the kitchen was just it was the they just trashed the place. Yeah. It was at, there was food everywhere, yeah. smeared on the walls, oh, gloves no. had been ripped, rakes had been snapped, yeah. just everything. The only thing these gorillas did not touch were the razor sharp knives on the magnetic thing. Yeah. And for some reason, that was the only, th- literally the only thing. The blender was smashed on the floor. Whoa. Everything yeah, was yeah. Tr- like completely trashed. Wow. It was hilarious. Brilliant. The yeah. radio. Yeah. Because we played. <laughs> it's so funny. We used to play classic FM. Yeah. Because it's <laughs> that was a protest against you. Classic FM. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking classic FM. That's what they got in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Put, right, put absolute on. Yeah. No repeat yeah. guarantee. <laughs> and no, we used to play it because uh, there was like research studies into the gorillas um, are more calmer. It's a calm environment. Right. If they, they, I don't know if that's true. Sure. Uh, but there's research studies into. So we used to play classic uh, um, FM yeah. or Magic oh, on right. a Sunday. <laughs> wow. So yeah, nice. they'd smash that to pieces. It was a very scary moment. I'll bet, yeah. You just very opened scary. the door and there were there looking at you. There was one thing I just sat That's on the okay, top, yeah. just like looked and she didn't the thing is like she would they would have never have tried to get out because they they would have been terrified. They would have been like, oh, What the yeah. fuck is that out there? But it's it's you going in. No, yeah, it's just that have to try and get in to close it off. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that terrifying though. That yeah, like, yeah. brown trouser roll. Oh, sure. that, it so is, and you know what? Like when because I, I worked with the, the big cats there as well, and I was lucky enough to be able to get very close to them. The scariest moment of ever working there was being behind when the male lion, which well, is when you went in, he was the most protective of his two females, most protective cat, and he would. Like, people would always be like, what do, you, what do you reckon you'd do? What would happen if you went in there? But like, he would kill you yeah. twice over. Like, no yeah. doubt. Because if, when we went into the back, he would come in, and the, the growl of a lion is so... It gets under your skin. Huh. Like, it's so deep, huh. and it's so rattly. Yeah. 
and it makes your hairs go up. You're just like, oh my god, that's oh. fucking terrifying. And he would jump up and he would roar. Yeah. And once you hear that that close up, like you, it's about a meter and a half gap you've got between the wall and the mesh of their yeah. indoor dens. And he would just like, as you walk, he would just walk like that oh. and just keep his eyes on you, no matter what you did. All you were doing is like. You know, you'd be cleaning out the far end deck, mm. so he couldn't get you, but he would just be watching you, wanting to know. Just trying to see, trying to get his more. Trying to get out, yeah. Like, one more, one day, one day. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that, that is what oh. he's. And this yeah. is when captivity starts to sound bad, because mm. this is you're thinking, well, that animal is clearly distressed. It's like, no, you got to remember, cats are, especially lions, are very, very territorial. Mm. And his female was a very affectionate female towards people for some reason, oh, okay. towards the keepers. So she used to rub her head against the mesh when we were there. It's a very, like, kind of... You know, like yeah, cats yeah. rub their head against your legs. Yeah. It's a very affectionate thing that they do to each other as well. Oh, yeah. And he did not like that. Mm. So he hated us. I had a girlfriend like that for a month, <laughs> actually. She's so affectionate to all the guys, and then uh, yeah. I'd have to and fight, like it, to fight the other guys. Yeah. So it's just like that. It's like, great, that's great. great. He's going to kill me. Uh, yeah. No, but look, come on, you've got to take my up. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I'm going to get killed now. <laughs> this is great, thanks. Yeah, I mean, is it worth it? Don't know. Yeah. Well... Yeah, that's it. Well, we had to get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> but yeah, but that's it. that's how it worked, you know. Yeah. They um, he didn't like us, and that was that was always terrifying moments. Yeah. But there are a few animals that freak me out, so that I don't like. Them. Yeah, that's fair. but that's I think that's a healthy fear. I think that's an instinctive thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Oh, giant gorilla, silverback gorilla, tear you from limb from limb. Yeah. And like a lion, just again, do the same thing, but just with different tools. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just different, different means of doing so. Yeah. One's gonna just rip it off. The other one is gonna bite or just claw yeah, yeah. it off. Just claw yeah. oh, That's God. great. It's, it's not, not gonna. It's not a good day. It's a good, good day. <laughs> it is. There's a risk of working in the zoo. So like, yeah. a lot of these animals could and would yeah. do damage. Did you actually go out to any of the conservation uh, sites to to work? You worked in the zoo, but was, you but anywhere, there, anywhere else? Only. I was gonna say this gonna make it sound boring, but it's not at all. It's still very interesting. Only within the UK. So. Mm. We, Chessington Zoo did a lot of work with native species, so of like stag beetles, of um, a type of huntsman spider, I can't remember the name of it now. Yeah. Um, it's a one that actually lives on water. Oh. Venomal, something spider, I'm going to yeah. try and remember that. But, um, and uh, a lot of snake species, dormouse, and, and stuff like that. So mm. we used to do like ecological surveys, so we used to go out and we used to put like tin down in woods and then that mm. would attract snakes and then it would also it would attract mice and then it would attract snakes mm. so we did a lot of work practically like that we used to do pond clears and like set them back up to be a healthy environment I never got the chance to go abroad to do anything I wish I could I really wish I could I do try and spread that message quite a lot now though mm. I do when I did my show last I did a show last year called Into the Wild as well at the end I would always have like leaflets that people could take so it's, like, it's all very good talking about this kind of stuff joking about it having fun but it's like you got to remember guys we, like every, the wild needs our help mm. like I always talk and I, I ne- never like to preach about it but you know people I, th- I think the environment is such a loose time, a loose term that people use now they always go like oh yeah the, the, the environment is very important we should protect it so like, I think people forget that they're on the environment mm. the environment is not France like mm-hmm. there's not a place across the road called yeah. the environment yeah. um, not here I mean my, my house and and like you know, my, I need a patio. I, fuck the grass. I'm just. I'm gonna have a patio. No, that's just, the environment. That's, it. that's, that's it. the environment. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pave over this bit no, of environment. Well, here. No, no, you can I'll, do a I'll bit. Put a tree in the middle. It's fine. That's <laughs> it. You know, they'll love but it. That, you know what? You say that. That's all people need to do. They don't need to plant a tree. But if every garden had a wild area, yeah. and just of you putting down some wild plant seeds, mm. oh, it would be a different place. But people are just like, eh, no. As you can see, Ryan, I'm doing my bit out there. That's it. Yeah, right. yeah. You've gone overboard oh, in the know. wild oh, area. I need to start calling <laughs> some, some deer. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a gun, so I might have to use a sledgehammer. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know, just one or two. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. The deer. You know, it's uh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So you got your show come up in Camden. Yes. Yeah. What date is that again? It's the 11th to the 15th of August. Um, Camden Comedy Club. 8pm, um, just get tickets on the Camden Fringe website, just search Ha Ha Land. So it's five dates, five quid for all shows. Friday and Saturday, I will say now, I say now is nearly sold out, Great. which we're very happy with, but we also predicted that Friday and Saturday would probably sell a lot quicker than the other days. So um, if you want that date, get on quick, otherwise you'll have to come on a, on a Monday evening. And the name of your podcast is Into the Wild? So it's Into the Wild, um, the podcast. It's a fun podcast, it's, it's comedy, but it is 
talking about animals. Yeah. It's educational. It's fun. It, it's great all around. So yeah, that's that's on there. And more episodes will be uploaded shortly as soon as I get my laptop sorted. Yeah, as soon as yeah. I get this hex off you for. As a soon as I get this te- <laughs> technology hex <laughs> brushed off of me, that'd be great. Yeah. And then, yeah, if anyone's got a dog in Archway or in London, okay. or North London, you want looking after, right? And we can shout. we can find you on Twitter and Twitter, Mr. Ryan J. Dalton, Instagram, Mr. Ryan J. Dalton. Brand it up. Be a brand. Be yeah. a brand. You are a brand, Winter. <laughs> well, Ryan, thanks for coming to the show. Thank man. you so much for having me on. It's been really good fun. Thank you, man. And that was episode 52 with a very funny, very passionate, the comedic crusader, Ryan Dalton. Go find him on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. He's on there as Ryan Dalton. I really respect what Ryan does. He's using his comedy for good, trying to make the world a better place. And, and that's not cheesy. That's just a, you know, a selfless place to come at comedy from. I respect that very much. Go find Ryan on all those places. He also runs a gig in Bracknell called The Comedy Wire. And he has his own podcast called Into the Wild. Go check that out there. It's on Podbean, iTunes, all those places. You can follow this podcast on Twitter at The Comedy Defect. You can follow me at Winter Phonander. As I say, updates for my show, a side effect will be at Winter Phonander on Twitter. And you can come see that show at the Free Sisters, at the Marquee, from 2 to 3, from the 3rd until the 27th, not the 7th or 14th. So come see the show, guys. I need you guys there. If you want to support this podcast, you can come support me there because I've been working on that show an awful lot. But if you want to donate and you can't make the show, go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect, and you can donate as little as a dollar or as much as you feel this podcast is worth. And those of you that do donate, thank you because you're paying for the people that can't. And those of you that can't donate, hey, look, just come see my show. It's from the 3rd until the 27th, full run of the fringe in the Free Sisters in the Marquee from 2 to 3. It's a 45-minute show, guys, so come see it there. But that's all I'm going to say for this episode. We've got more episodes in the can, and you will hear them on that last Wednesday of each month. So that's it, guys. We'll see you after the Fringe. Have a good August. <laughs>